You know, one of the last things I want to kind of get into because it's very exciting buzz that we haven't had for a while and it's kind of setting up for the 2026 World Cup. It's our US national team. What an amazing and you were I mean you were in the swing of it with Tab and the youth and you saw these kids and where they're progressing now with yeah. the Gio Reyna, with the Polichick, with the Tyler Adams, with the Weston McKinney. You know, there's so much young talents that are key players at a yeah. young age for big clubs that we haven't had like this. Um, I want to kind of, when you're seeing that from the outside now, from working in the MLS to kind of um, wrap us up is where do you see our game heading to in the U S as well as what's the system, you know, obviously that you kind of uh, see kind of coming into fruition if, you know, obviously, I don't want you to play the role of other coaches in that sense, but obviously as we always play with it, man, if everyone's healthy, we would plug this here, plug this there. That would set up for what the U S has going on. No. Yeah. I mean, yeah, uh, you know, I give a lot of credit to tab, you know, um, not just because I work with him and I have a very good relationship with him and we're good friends, but because, you know, what he did in the last uh, 10 years, and while he was with U.S. Soccer, um, it is phenomenal. And and to his credit, a lot of the players that are coming through now, playing at Juventus, playing in Schalke, playing at Red Bull, uh, Leipzig, uh, you know, all over Europe, really. Uh, PSV Eindhoven, Ajax, um, you know, some of the top clubs in the world. Chelsea, obviously, with Pulisic. You know, the, uh, a lot of it has to do with his uh, his uh, planning and organization where he brought in coaches that he believed in. Um, and he really told everyone, you know, me included, that, hey, we got to teach these kids and we got to develop them in a way where they go out and they fear no one. It doesn't matter where whether we play, we're playing France, we're playing Honduras, or we're playing Holland. You know, we go out there with the same mentality that we can beat anyone. Um, and I think, um, at least I know the the few years that I coached the U18 national team, I I basically told the players that look, you know, when we play the Frances and the Russias and, you know, some of the top youth teams in the world. Don't look at them like, you know, they're, they're world beaters and you can't even come close. They, they're the same players. You just got to go out and compete. The biggest thing for us was to compete. Uh, we felt like the development Academy had a, done a great job of uh, developing players at a high level uh, creating good environments within clubs. And the American player had become a lot more technical. Uh, then there was this, this element that was lacking. And that element was the, the competitiveness, you know, the, the wanting to go out and, and win every game, regardless of the opponent. And we really try to instill that mentality and attitude within the players. And uh, I remember uh, I we played with the U18s. We played a tournament in the Czech Republic, and Czech Republic had a really good team. They were all six two, six three, with good feet. Um, but our players went out there. You know the Paxton Palmacals of this of, of today, uh, Nick Tadigu, who is at Schalke. Um, uh, some of the other players, Brandon Servania, just got moved to uh, to the Bundesliga and in Austria. You know, we had some very good players. They they started believing in the, in themselves that they can compete, and they went out and we won the tournament. And then you had Weston McKinney. I saw Weston McKinney uh, just after he was uh, he was the last cut from the U seventeen World Cup team that was coached by Richie Williams, and I ended up coaching that group for a short period of time. Uh, right after that World Cup. And Weston McKinney's head was down. And at the time, he was in more of a 10. Uh, he was very attacking-minded. 
And I told him, look, you know, just because you didn't make the World Cup, it's not the end of the world. You're young. You're only 16. You got the world in front of you, a lot of time in front of you. Just make sure that you're working hard every day. You come with the right mentality and you compete. And then, you know, the, he, he, the next cycle that he was in was with the U19s with Brad Friedel, uh, who was the coach. And I went to their first camp with Brad. And I remember Weston McKinney in the tournament in Spain was the best player in the tournament. And from there on, he took off. His trajectory was unbelievable. In fact, it was uh, during one of our U-20 camps that a call came that he uh, he's being transferred to, not transferred, he's being bought out by, um, by Schalke, and he left in the middle of the camp. But um, these kids are good players, and we have a lot more. You know, the base, maybe, let's say, 15, 20 years ago, we had 20 good players at each age level. Now we have 50. We have 60 good players. So the probabilities are even higher now that some of these players are going to make it to the to to uh, to the top clubs in in Europe and and playing at the highest level in world football. I mean, and it's so refreshing to hear. I mean, obviously having coaches like yourself, Tab Ramos, you know, when that conversation so simple that you had with Weston, but it's so important. It could yeah. be the fl- it could be the flip side to it. Someone would be like, hey, maybe you're not good enough. Maybe you yeah. can't make it. And from there, he shuts down. He doesn't become who he is today. But a little bit of that talk says, you know what? Coach says, I'm still young. You're right. I am young. And I'm not going to stop working at it. I'm going to work harder. That puts a fire in me. But that belief yeah. and that proper education, I think um, our coaches should get the credit as well within our U.S. soccer umbrella as well. As we're producing this, there's a reason the opportunities are given. The growth is happening. The growth is happening. And it's exciting to see what 1994 did for U.S., what mm-hmm. 2026 was most likely will do knock on wood because yeah. it's um, it's very exciting to see. And I think um, um, just the setups of what we're trying to do, it's uh, heading in the r- uh, right direction. And, and it has to do with credit with you guys as coaches in those environments to create a positive environment. So that's- yeah, I appreciate that. And I, and I really believe with the new crop of players that, that are around and the ones that are coming up, I really feel in, in, in a couple of years where, when, you know, Weston McKinney, I think he's, he's a, he's a, no, he's a 99 or two. Th- he's a 90. He's a 98. 98. He's born in 98. 98. Uh, so he's 23 years old. When, when Weston is 25 and Pulisic is 25 and uh, some of the other players, Sergeant is, you know, Sergeant is younger, you know, Reina, Reina, you know, some of these guys, when they mature a little bit more and they have a couple years under their belt in the, in European football and then champions, League. I really feel our national team can compete with anyone. I, I really feel like in a couple of years, we will be able to compete with anyone. Now, people talk about when is the U.S. going to win the World Cup? Look, winning the World Cup is not as easy as we can say, hey, we have good players or we have the best players and we're going to win the World Cup. You look at Argentina. They they export players all over the world. They have the best players in the world. They have the best player in the world and they still can't win a world cup. So winning a world cup is not just, you know, me snapping my finger and say, we have the best players. We should win the world cup. It comes down to the grouping that you get, you know, in the preliminary rounds, then it comes down to some luck when it gets to the penalty kicks or the the knockout rounds. You know, there's a lot that goes on, uh, injuries that could happen within the World Cup, preparation, um, so much that goes on for a team to win the World Cup. So, but having said that, I feel like, you know, more than any other time, we have a chance. Yep. If things fall, you know, chips fall, you know, where they may or for us, where, they, where we want them to, we could go far in, in a World Cup. 